player, I'm sure, for all you ladies and fans, come out and watch us swing the bat and hit the ball out of the park. You know, the saying that we'll wish they should have stayed home the ball. I know, I know. But we can score in other ways too. And uh, to, get a, to get a win like that last night, we're, uh, we're not banging the ball out of the park and, uh, and doing the things we usually do to produce runs like that is, is huge for us and lets us know that we can kind of do it in other ways as well. Craig, if you would, let everybody know what the atmosphere is like in the clubhouse a couple of hours before the game, before you even go out to take batting practice. What's it like inside the first clubhouse? Uh, before, we, before we take batting practice, guys are, you know, matriculating into the, into the clubhouse, getting in. Uh, a lot of guys have different routines uh, to get ready. A lot of guys get into the, into the training room if they have any treatment they need to have done, if anything sore or bothering them. They'll get in there well before batting practice so they're ready when BP starts. Uh, a lot of us go in down to the video room. We have a really awesome video room with a video coordinator down there who puts together the picture that we're going to be facing that night. And we can even go back and look at our bats against that picture or any other picture for that fact that we faced in the last two, three years. So we have a wealth of information down there that we can use, which is really helpful to us. I mean, we're yeah, we're, we're, we're athletes, but at the same time, we you know we study the game and you know we want to give ourselves every opportunity we can to be as successful as we can to help our team win and, and that's one of the big ways that we do is by watching video and really studying how the other pitchers are attacking us as hitters or even other hitters in the league. So uh, other than that, you know, we'll get down into the cage. I'm sure you ladies got down in the cage and took some swings. Uh, that's where we do a lot of our work too before the game starts, before we actually get out and get into the batting practice. So we get down in the cages. Take some swings with our hitting coach. We'll kind of just flip some balls. We can do that. We need no fatigue. Uh, we have an iron mic set up down there that we'll actually throw the ball by about 80, 85 miles an hour so we can actually simulate a live arm coming at us. Uh, besides that, it's pretty loose in our clubhouse. I mean, we've got, we've got a real, real cool group of guys, interesting group of guys. Um, it, they keep it really light. There's, there's, you walk through our clubhouse when, when everyone's in there, all the players are in there, there's, there's no tension. Um, it's a lot of joking around, there's music playing, guys are pretty laid back, but we're also at the same time, we're extremely focused and motivated. So the, all the years I've been in the big leagues, which isn't many, uh, and all the clubhouses I've been around, it's, it's a great mix of guys. The one thing that's different about our game, Greg, is that you play every day. That's why they say it's like life. And uh, unlike uh, other sports that have a locker room, we have a clubhouse, which has a little boy feel to it. But you need that, don't you? When every night you're playing and every day you're back in the clubhouse again, it seems like Groundhog Day all over again. It is. It is. The season is Groundhog Day. It comes out. You go into different cities and you don't know what day it is. or It's just it's, it's weird because you play it every, every day. It's not like football where it's you know, every Sunday once a week and, and you have that time in between to decompress. Um, yeah, it's, you know, we're, we're living our, our childhood dreams, you know, when this game is, is a boys game and, and we're men playing a game and to have that, that sense inside the clubhouse and when you get to the stadium, have that feeling of, yes, it's a job, but it's also something that we're all very passionate about that we grew up playing and wanting to do ever since we're, you know, gay tall. Uh, it, this, this stadium, this clubhouse really captures that feeling for us as players and, uh, it's, it's very special when you come to the park and come into a clubhouse like the one here in Philly and you get that feeling all over again every time you walk in. Let's talk about one of the reasons the clubhouse is so loose, Greg, and that's the skipper, Charlie Manuel. You guys have a very uh, good relationship with each other, don't you? Charlie's awesome. Uh, he's unlike any manager I've been around for many reasons. One, you know, he's, he's laid back, he's got kind of the, the Midwest Southern draw, and, a lot, of people, a lot of people like to get on about that, but he, he's smart and simple at the same time. And in this game, you can get uh, you can get over analytical, and you can get paralysis by analysis, is what we like to try and call it. I try to sound smart, but really not. I've never heard that. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But, uh, he's he's great because he keeps it simple. He he can relate to his players. Uh, in, in ways that I've never had managers relate to me personally, and I've seen him relate to other players as well uh, in our clubhouse. Um, he's a fun guy to be around. I mean, I'll, I've been met around managers who are uptight and who don't really say anything to their players and don't walk around the clubhouse and, and pat guys on the back, and, you know, whether they're doing bad or whether they're doing good. Uh, you, you don't 
see that a lot anymore. I, I don't think, at least in my experience, coming up in Wear Leagues and, and being in the major leagues with other clubs. He's a, he's a lot of fun. He likes to have fun. And he, I think he embodies in, in what this club is about. And we talked about, you know, coming to a clubhouse and having fun. And, and it's a game. He, he embodies that. He, he exudes that. It's, it's a game to him. He loves coming to the park every day. He loves being around us as players. Uh, and we, in turn, we, we sense that. We, we thrive off that. I mean, he's our leader. You know, and as far as coaches goes, he's he's our leader, and, and I, I can't think of a, a better manager, a better leader to have than Charlie. And when you talk about keeping it simple, Chuck is so good at that because it, if you've ever, well, you never had a chance, unfortunately, but even in a spring training clubhouse where we have not only our major league roster, but we probably have what, Greg, maybe 30 non-roster or yeah. not, not roster players, minor league players. He'll walk around and say hello to everybody, and he'll spend just as much time with the guy just out uh, from, you know, just out of college and maybe a fifth round draft pick or whatever, as he will with Chase Hunt. It, it, it'll be simple again to behave on him. Yeah, right? Right. right. It's, it's expected. It, Nothing surprising. It is. He, he, he treats you like a person, you know, like, like, a, like, a, like a friend, like a human being, not just a player, not just somebody who's going to help him get another win on his manager or whatever. He treats everybody the same. He treats everybody with, with a, a kindness and a respect. Uh, that you would want to be treated with, uh, and that's I think that's what makes him very special. He, I mean, he's he's a very intelligent baseball man. I can't get that across enough. I don't think uh, because you know obviously none of you really have a chance to really sit down and talk with him, meet with him. But as far as the game goes, he's ex he's extremely smart. He knows the moves to make. He knows he has a very good knack of being able to put players like myself and other players in positions to succeed. And in this game, it is a failure sport. I mean, if three out of ten times you get a hit, you're going to Hall of Fame. You know? but you're, so you're failing seven out of ten times. It's, it's a tough road to hell, and, and he understands that because he was a player. But on the same token, he'll put you in that position to where he knows you're going to have the best chance to succeed as a player. That's all you can ask. So many variables in our sport. It's nice to know you have something you can depend on. Exactly. Let's talk about uh, one of the subjects that's, uh, I'm sure, at the top of everyone's mind here, since they're all fans. Philadelphia sports fans, your impression of, uh, especially Philly fans. <laughs> Why do you all laugh when I said that? Oh, I know, everybody, everybody says, oh, Philly fans, oh my god. You know, we're harsh, we're going to get on here, we're going to boo you. Hey, you know what, it comes with the territory. Um, it's, for me, it's a breath of fresh air, you know, I came up in the Seattle organization, up in the beautiful Northwest, <laughs> and it was such a breath of fresh air for me to, you know, leave there and, and come here to a city that is so passionate about their sports, and not just baseball, you know, basketball, football, hockey with the Flyers. Um, it, it's, you know, it, I love it, personally. Um, I can see how it can get under some people's skin a little bit, you know, especially visiting players. Uh, that's good. We want that. We want that. Craig, especially out in the bullpen area, perhaps. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. We've been out there, but I'm, I'm sure it gets pretty rowdy and raucous out there. But and keep doing it. I love it. <laughs> but no, it's it's great. You, the fans here, you guys, you understand the game. You, you're, there, there's a there's a certain passion and energy that you feel, or that I feel, when I come into this park. The lights go on. 7:05, first pitch and all you guys are into the game. There's a certain energy. It's, it's an energy that I didn't experience in Seattle, you know, playing at Safeco Field in front of our home fans, which are good fans, yeah, but they're not Philly fans. And now that I've experienced it, I know what true fans are, and, and it's another thing that is good about that experience is you guys expect a lot of us, and as you should, because we as players expect a lot of ourselves. So for you guys to hold us accountable as well, uh, it's just another motivating factor for us as players that keeps us going, keeps us pushing.